What's up everybody? Welcome to Queer Girl Straight Skates. I'm Rebel. Today I am going to give you all of the advice that I received and a little bit of advice of my own for when you are injured. There's this phenomenon that happens when you're injured. A bunch of people who have all also been injured send a bunch of advice your way. So I figured that what I would do is take all of the advice that I received and put it into one video, um, especially the things that really helped me. So this is that video. Remember, I am not a doctor. This is not any sort of medical advice. This is just some things that were around the house or just in general that helped me and maybe it will help you. Queer Girl Straight Skates is a YouTube channel full of roller skating tutorials, reviews, general roller skating lifestyle videos, and the home of the Injured Roller Skaters playlist. If you are a person who wants to start roller skating or you're learning how to roller skate or you've been skating forever, I really think that you will find a home here so you should subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified when I post, which is always on Tuesdays and live on Sundays, but sometimes there's some other exciting things thrown in there like confetti. So here is a smorgasbord of a bunch of random helpful tips. There is not really any order to this list. It is just random, but maybe helpful. So the first thing that a lot of people suggested to me is to get Arnica. And so I ended up getting Arnica, the like the tablets that you just put in your mouth and then also the gel that you can actually put on the area that's really hurting. It's supposed to help with decreasing inflammation and also soothing pain. And I found that it just helped me feel a little bit better. So um, from many, many people, many people have suggested Arnica. I, I did not replace like my pain meds with that though. I just like added it to it. Okay, so another piece of advice that I got is a couple different places to put your ice pack when you have different injuries. So I was struggling because when my foot was in a cast, I didn't know how I was supposed to actually ice my leg because like I knew I was supposed to ice it, but I wasn't sure how because like ice doesn't get through a cast. But what someone told me was to put ice behind my knee. And when I put the ice behind my knee, it was actually like it made my whole leg feel better. And I don't understand the mechanics of that, but I just know that it totally worked for me. Another thing someone said was to put ice, like an ice pack on the back of your neck if you're having migraines. And I tended to have a lot of migraines during this whole injury process. And so when I put that ice pack on the back of my neck, it literally made a world of a difference. And on the subject of ice packs, make sure you get a really good ice pack. So my favorite, and it just kind of, it really is up to you, like what you think is the best for your body or how it feels best for you. But I really liked the soft, big ice packs because I could use it in a bunch of different places and it wasn't like the hard ones for me were really difficult and uncomfortable, but the soft ones, even though they warmed up faster, those were the ones that I just like loved. Okay, so this is the number one piece of advice that literally everyone gave me the moment that I found out that my ankle was sprained or that I broke my leg was RICE. And RICE stands for rest, ice, compression, and elevation. And so everyone, like I got, I can't even tell you the amount of messages that I got that said rice, rice, rice. And that is what the doctor said as well, is that just rice, as soon as you get any sort of leg injury or injury in general, um, a lot of times, one of the main ways that they treat your injury is going to be the rice method. Do I know if it's proven? No. Did it help me? Yeah. Okay, so now here is a little bit of a solution that was brought to me for people who are immobilized. So when I was immobilized, I was struggling a lot with like being really hungry and not being able to get up and get food and like couldn't bring my food to my area or anything like that. So what someone suggested to me that really worked is while your partner or anyone is at home, whether it's like before they go off to work or even the night before, 
set up a snack station. So in your area, wherever it is that you are ending up being immobilized, have them bring a bottle of water, a bunch of snacks, like anything that you're potentially gonna need and set it up in a cute little way around you. So you feel not only like, oh, this is actually kind of cute and convenient, but also you're not starving yourself on accident because you can't get up to like get yourself food when you really need it. Speaking of food, I <laughs> just like ran out of food and I couldn't afford to keep getting food delivered like Postmates or Uber Eats or anything like that. And so what I decided to use was a grocery delivery service. So if you're able to use a grocery delivery service and you can deliver yourself snacks or deliver yourself food that is easy to prepare, because that's something else I found is that I couldn't actually cook without literally endangering my own life or my dog's life. So I ended up getting, using a delivery service and then just getting a bunch of like soccer mom snacks. Like Shove came home and was like, why are there fruit roll-ups and uh, gummies and <laughs> like oranges and like just all easy things for me to eat. But you know what? it made it so that I was actually able to eat consistently throughout the day because I didn't have to prepare the actual food. I can't even tell you how many Uncrustables that I ate, but you know what? They were delicious and it was little peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I'm not apologizing for it. I'm not mad about it. The next thing is when you are having to go to the doctor or the hospital or the urgent care or anywhere that you have to go and you don't have insurance. I don't know why I didn't think of this, but Shove was like, yeah, no, duh but you can just Google specifically like what you need. So I needed an orthopedic surgeon or a sports specialist for my leg. And we Googled like sports specialist in Long Beach that takes no insurance. And I ended up finding someone who's absolutely perfect for my needs, was affordable enough. And I never would have even thought of putting that into a Google search, even though it feels like a no duh moment, but I had researched a bunch and couldn't find anything and was just getting all of these people that were telling me so, so much money and then shove, put that in the Google machine and then I was like, oh, and we found someone great. So Google, no insurance, and then whatever doctor, hospital, urgent care that you need and maybe that will provide you with a better result. Not gonna lie, this one changed my whole life. I was on crutches for a whole month and during that month, when you're on crutches, like you can't carry anything and it's incredibly frustrating and you feel like you're a mess and then you're sitting in your own mess and then you're immobile and then you're in pain and it's just like totally snowballing. At least it did for me. But what I didn't realize until like halfway through and my roommate told me about this because she had been on crutches too, is to get a backpack for yourself. Backpacks are the key to being able to move from room to room with your stuff. And I had felt so stuck in one place because I was like, oh, I can't carry my laptop to the next room. Like so frustrating. But as soon as I was like, oh yeah, I have a backpack from, you know, whatever year I was in grad school. And then I started putting my stuff in my backpack and moving from room to room that way. It, it changed my life. So a backpack changed your life, maybe. Do I wish someone had told me this next one way earlier? Hell yeah. Okay, so if you hurt your leg somehow, you will probably end up with some form of like an air boot or like an air cast or like a boot of some kind, right? And so I got one and they put it on my foot and at the moment I was in a cast, so they took my cast off and then they put my foot in the boot. And then they said, just like leave it on all the time. So I did, but what I didn't know is that you can take it off and put a sock on and then put your boot back on because guess what? That thing reeks so bad if you don't wear socks. If I had just known in the beginning, cause now I'm wearing a sock, but it's still, it already smells. So I'm like trying to get the smell out, but really like, unless you start off using the boot with a sock and then like switching out the sock every day, then you're gonna get that smell in there and you're not gonna be able to get it out. So if you are having to get a boot, wear a sock in your boot. Because there was a moment where I was like, I smell so bad and I just got out of the shower and it's because I put my foot back in this boot. So 
socks. Lifesavers. For some reason, I like thought I couldn't use a sock. And so I'm telling you, my doctor said I could use a sock and that he was like, oh yeah, of course. And I'm, dang, well, I wish I knew that. So here's the information. Another piece of advice that I got was from another skater in the community and they told me that I should keep my x-rays. And the reason why I should keep my x-rays is because if I wanted to get a second opinion, which you might, because there are not everyone will diagnose your whatever is going on correctly, and you can show it to other people, maybe you just want to keep your x-rays because they're a cool thing to keep. And like, look at me, look at my broken ankle. It's dope. I'm going to put it into a post. <laughs> um, but yeah, so keep your x-rays. Um, my x-rays were just automatically given to me, but sometimes like future x-rays, they won't give them to you. So you have to ask for your x-rays if you want your x-rays. So I would recommend, especially that first x-ray that you get, that you keep it. This next one is that the roller skate community is a community of skaters and all of us skate, which means a lot of us have been injured and understand the place that you are at. So whatever it is that you need, you should reach out to the community first because the community has your back. I can't even tell you the amount of things that were given to me to either just have and then pass on to another injured skater or things that were given to me to borrow that would help me through this like amount of time that I'm struggling. And so those all came from other skaters who've been in my position. And let me just tell you as a person who's in this right now, I will most definitely be helping future injured skaters in any way that I can. So when you've gone through something like this, you wanna help others. So reach out to the community. Maybe someone will be able to support you in whatever needs that you have because the skate community is awesome and is full of a lot of really awesome people. So don't be scared reach out. We all got you. I got you. Okay, so this one is not really supported by anything except my doctor suggesting it. So he suggested that I start taking different vitamins. So I started taking calcium, turmeric, and collagen when I first broke my leg because he said that those were all helpful in contributing to rebuilding broken bones. And I looked it up on the Google and it tends to be across the board something that people suggest. And I just went to a Walgreens and picked up those three vitamins. And I've been taking those vitamins every day since I broke my leg. And um, my doctor said that my leg has been healing well. Not that there's any correlation between those two, but I just thought I'm going to do literally everything that I possibly can to help my bones to be strengthened and to rebuild. And so taking vitamins was one of those things. Also something that I learned is that different vitamins are activated by other vitamins. So look into the vitamins that you're taking and make sure that you're not just taking the vitamin that is good for you, but also the vitamin that like activates that other vitamin. I am not a nutritionist, so I definitely don't know all the real rules here. That is just something that I have learned recently and a suggestion that someone gave to me. So do with that whatever you will. Okay, so this next one is about keeping yourself clean. Now, I know it is really hard to be motivated to keep yourself clean when you are injured, and it's also really hard to like physically do that. Like, I wanted to take a shower so many times, and I just couldn't. So I just felt even worse because I was like sitting in my own filth, and I was just like, ugh, I'm disgusting, I'm the worst, right? But um, what I found is there are some things that could really, really help you. The first one is a shower stool. Not gonna lie, shower stool saved my life, made it so I could actually take showers. And yeah, I had to crawl in and out of the shower, but who cares? I was able to sit down, water was able to run on my face, I was able to clean myself and it was wonderful. Uh, I'm still using a shower stool because I'm not allowed to do anything outside of my boot. Um, but another thing, if you aren't at the point where you can get a shower stool or take a shower yet, body wipes are your best friend. Body wipes are life. Like think about you're imagining you're camping, but like inside your house. <laughs> so like using your body wipes, 
take a shower that way, clean yourself that way. It's gonna make you feel so much better. What I did a lot in the beginning is I used body wipes and then I would put lotion that smelled really good on and it made me feel clean and made me feel better about myself in moments where like I couldn't control anything else. I couldn't control the pain I was in. I couldn't control like how I looked really because I could only, like I had to wear the same pair of pants for a really long time because they were stuck on me and I had a, a cast on and that was out of my control. It was like, I didn't know I was gonna get a cast, ended up getting cast oh well, like now I'm stuck. And then we were finally able to get them off. But like, there are moments that are out of your control kind of when you get injured. So body wipes, any little thing that you can do for yourself, that's really going to help you, or at least it really did for me. Okay, so my very last tip is that the internet is so helpful. And also the internet provides a lot of tips that aren't helpful. So be really cautious of what you do because remember everyone's experience is different and everyone has different things that they should be doing for their body. And the best thing that you can do is go to a doctor who actually has the experience, can look at your injury and tell you what is best for you. Also, on the internet, there are a bunch of doctors and some of the doctors on the internet are physical therapists and physical therapists on the internet are awesome because guess what, especially on YouTube, there are physical therapists like Bob and Brad, the most famous physical therapists on the internet, who will show you like, oh, you have this injury, then here are some physical therapy exercises that you can do, or here are some range of motion movements, here are some different things. So if you get the go ahead from your doctor to like start physical therapy, but you can't afford physical therapy, maybe it's time that you go on YouTube and you look up like physical therapist exercises for, insert your injury there, and if you can't afford physical therapy, maybe YouTube can help you. Those are some of the many, many, many suggestions that people provided to me when I first got injured and throughout the process. I hope that some of them have helped you and that this can be a resource for you or for other skaters that are injured in the future. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you wanna support me, you can shop Cheers to the Queers, my Etsy, or you can join my Patreon where I make weekly vlogs and hang out with people on there. And remember, if you are injured, don't worry, you are not alone. Find community here in the comments. Talk about your experience, support other skaters, find some friends who are in injured skater groups. Getting to know other people who are injured and talking about your experience is one of the most healing things that you can do for yourself mentally. And the mental part of healing is half of the battle when you get injured. So most importantly, cheers to the queers. Mwah.